Hello again and welcome to another day of daily Bible study. Uh, we're in the, the letter, the homily, uh, the sermon to the Hebrews. Uh, we're going to start chapter 4 today. But before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, you speak to us and, and you transform us. And Lord, we need to be hearing. Lord, uh, we need to be in a situation where we're putting ourselves at your feet so we can hear you. Uh, but Lord, help us to, to go to you. Help us to receive from you what you have to give. And Lord, sometimes receiving from you what you have to give feels like it cuts us to the heart. And yet, Lord, it is for our healing. So Lord, help us to uh, receive what you have to say. And Lord, help us to always be going back to you because that's where we will find life. Lord, we ask you to watch over us during this time. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are in chapter 4 of, of Hebrews. So they write, Therefore, let us fear if... While a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he said somewhere concerning the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works." And again, in this passage, they shall not enter my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience, he again fixes a certain day, today, saying through David after so long a time, as if, uh, just as been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest, so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So I want to say a couple things. One, this is, I mentioned at the end of the study from yesterday that uh, Hebrews talks about salvation almost entirely as a future thing. This thing that we will be saved. We will enter into rest. And I tried to emphasize the fact that whereas Paul will talk about the idea of you are saved, um, there is, there's, there's, a, there's a duality of salvation. There's the, the nowness of salvation and there's the thenness of salvation. And uh, a robust understanding of the whole New Testament understanding of salvation will take both of those aspects seriously. Uh, and John Wesley, when we talk about um, James, you know, uh, this, he talks about this idea of faith without works is dead and that we're saved by our works and not by faith alone. And, and that you know, gives us Protestants fits because one of our big things is we are saved by grace through faith alone. But the, how John Wesley reconciles the two is to say, you know, the faith by which we are ultimately justified, you know, when we die, um, is based on cannot be simply an intellectual conception of faith, but it has to have also manifested itself in works. The salvation by which we are saved today, um, for the first time, you know, may not necessarily have any works with it at all. But if we are genuinely saved in the one sense, it will produce the kinds of works that you know play to our salvation in the other sense. Hebrews is mostly concerned about the coming salvation rather than necessarily current salvation. So there's, again, a big stress about this where it's saying this idea of we will, we will enter into rest. Um, that is a different rest than what has been done in the past. So I want to emphasize that again, that we have this, this forward-looking idea that, that faith and reliability is the kind of thing that is judged at the end and not necessarily in any particular moment. And that's actually encouraging, I think, because there's a whole chapter we're trying to lay out here are some specific heroes of faith, you know, in chapter 11. And I think it's important to realize that there is, on the one hand, people want to talk about, am I saved now? Am I saved now? And there's a, there's a value to that, to ask the question of, am I really committed to Christ? And and what does it mean to be committed to Christ today? So that's a good thing. But to get so caught up in it is actually not necessarily healthy because we have this long tradition in the Bible of um, faith is assessed after the fact. You know, at the end of life, look back to did you rely on God? Not just for one day, but did you rely on God as the basic pattern of your life? And that is how the book of Hebrews is going to evaluate who the faithful people throughout history have been. So I emphasize that again. Uh, the, the real kind of shining center of this passage is in um, you know, verses 12 and 13. We're talking about the word of God being uh, living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, and so we, we, we talk about this in terms of Scripture a lot of times. But the irony about it is that specifically the quotation says that the, the word of God is living. It's alive. And whatever ink on a page is, it's not alive. Now, I want to make sure I'm being clear. 
Um, I'm not trying to say that it does not apply in any way to the Scripture. I'm saying it applies in a secondary way to Scripture. Because the Word of God who is living and active is most naturally the Scripture of Jesus. The living Christ is the living Word of God. We see the Word of Jesus called the Word of God several places, uh, most notably in the Gospel of John. So the point is that here we, and especially because verse 13 talks about there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That, so, so yes, to talk about the word of God is definitely also to talk about scripture. And, and I don't want to, again, I don't want to pretend like it doesn't. But first and foremost, we're talking about Jesus here. We're talking about Jesus is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. And that Jesus cuts to, um, you know, between, you know, can, can divide between soul and spirit, bone, you know, uh, joints and marrow, uh, d- able to determine the, the um, thoughts and intentions of the heart. You know, the, so it's, it, is, it is before Jesus that we are laid bare. Now, that all being said, there is a secondary sense in which the Word of God is also Scripture. And I can, I, I'm certainly not alone in my being able to bear witness to the fact that um, I have often felt cut to the quick and cut to my heart uh, by reading Scripture and having God you know, um, apply it to the heart. But it's not because there's something magical about words, because anybody can read these words and have it not affect them. And even people who, are, who have had a history of being affected by Scripture can read Scripture and not always be affected by it. I think that almost everyone can bear witness to that. The point is it's when God applies it to our heart and we are able to receive it that really uh, does a number on us. Um, and so there's really this fascinating part where it is, you know, nothing is hidden from God. This, the Word of God cuts to our hearts and lays us bare before God where we can be examined and not hide anything. And that can be, again, a little bit scary. But the point... Every time there's something a little bit scary in the book of Hebrews, the whole point is to try to emphasize uh, who God is, what the love of God is, the fact that this is the kind of thing where, where faith and life needs to be the kind of thing that not just once in a while, not just when we remember it, but it needs to be woven into the fabric of who we are and how we live. And when we do that, then we don't have to be afraid of, of the, the sharp word of God. Because at that point... The sharpness of the Word of God becomes like the, the blade of a scalpel in the hands of a skilled surgeon. Yes, it can be painful, uh, and yet it is for the service of healing the whole body. And, and I think that there's, that's one more thing where it's, it almost can come off as a threat. But if we read it in its proper context, if we understand what Hebrews is trying to tell us, and the understanding of God is trying to communicate to us, and the kind of faithfulness it's calling us to, we realize that it is really a beautiful thing, uh, and that it is worth embracing and living our lives uh, uh, seeking rather than running away from Well, that's all I have for today. Come back in tomorrow. We'll finish up our week of this daily Bible study in the letter to the Hebrews. Have a good day.